But yeah, why? Why do you ask? Oh no, I was just wondering, brother, because it's very interesting, you know, to receive the gift of tongues without being saved. So, you know, it's a uh, well. I, I do was most. I do I believe I was most certainly saved. I do believe, you know, I had repented from sin. I was just, you know, still, uh, you know, I was just mistaken about the law keeping thing. But I was, I was most certainly saved. I had believed in the death, you know, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the atonement for my sins and all that. I have repented completely from sin. And uh, yeah, so I was most certainly saved, put my faith in the Messiah. I was just... <laughs> Hey, brother, I don't actually have a webcam. <laughs> you don't have a webcam? Is that cool? Uh, yeah, you know, we can make it kind of like a podcast. I can I can just have you up on the the in the audio and uh yeah. So how you doing, my guy? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good. It's so good to um well, first of all, <clears> brother, <throat> I was praying for you the entire time when you was under the law in the way you was and honestly, like it nearly brought me to tears when you came out and made that video. So, you know, you know my personal beliefs and we're not going to get into that. But I do believe you are very uh, in a much better position spiritually than you was then. So hallelujah for that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have I saw you did a video reacting to my deliverance. I didn't actually watch the video because, you know, um, I wasn't sure what your bent was on it. I'm not I wasn't sure if it was a positive thing. I mean, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, yeah. go ahead. I mean, technically, yeah, it was positive to to a certain extent. I was explaining how, um, well, brother, your your position is very strange, right? So can I ask you this question before we go into it, right? Yeah, when sure. exactly you claim you have the um, the gift of tongues, right? Yes. So when did you receive the gift of tongues? I received it after being baptized in the ocean and repenting of my sin okay so was this like a recent event that took place no i had the gift of tongues since i guess this would have been march okay was that when you was believing in the once saved always saved doctrine no no it was after that yeah so i repented okay. of the you know repented of all sin got baptized but i i was learning that but also being introduced to uh, keeping the law at the same time. Okay, yes, it's very interesting. But, okay, but but ultimately, you believe you believe the gospel, right? That Jesus Christ died, his blood was shed, he rose on the third day. Yeah, yeah, I've been, I oh. believe that since I was a free gracer, because free gracers believe that as well. But yes, it wasn't until I had repented of my sin and repented of um, mocking the gift of tongues, I had I'd been given teachings on that. And, you know, I, uh, I prayed to God, you know, asking for more faith. And then, uh, one day I was, you know, just thinking about it. And then I felt something welling up inside me. And at first I was skeptical because I wasn't, it wasn't like I was particularly desiring the gift of tongues. And I, it felt as if it was an urge to, to speak in tongues you know it's hard to explain like before you've ever spoken in tongues what the feeling is but it's as if the holy spirit is telling you what it is and so i decided to you know allow myself to be a fool for god for a moment i was in the privacy of my car and i just started speaking in tongues you know and at that point in time i had not yet i'd never even listened to people speak in tongues besides a couple instances when I was a kid and there was a woman who would speak in tongues in my church and uh, when I was mocking tongues on YouTube, but in all reality, the tongues I was mocking, I still am probably pretty suspicious of those because, you know, they were from, um, you know, people who were preaching a, a very strange gospel. But yeah, why? Why do you ask? Oh, no, I was just wondering, brother, because it's very interesting, you know, to receive the gift of tongues without being saved so you know it's uh well i, I was most great, i do I have, believe i was most certainly saved i do believe you know i had repented from sin i was just you know still uh you know i was just mistaken about the law keeping thing but i was i was most certainly saved i had believed in the death you know 
burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the atonement for my sins and all that. I have repented completely from sin. And uh, yeah, so I was most certainly saved, put my faith in the Messiah. I was just off about the whole, you know, keeping up the Sabbath and things of that nature. Why? You don't believe people who keep the Mosaic law are saved? Do I think that people keep the Mosaic law are saved, did you say? Yeah. I would never judge someone's salvation on if they are keeping the law or not. I would judge someone's salvation on if they believe the gospel and they believe that they are saved by the sacrifice of Christ, that he died, his blood was shed, and he rose on the third day, and they are trusting in that. Whatever mm -hmm. people do after that, if somebody wants to keep the Sabbath, but they're not keeping it for salvation, I would never say they are not saved. Um, you know, personally, I think the Sabbath is beautiful, but I would never say that somebody has to do it either for salvation. Whatever somebody decides to do, somebody doesn't want to eat pork, as long as they're not doing that for salvation, I wouldn't say that they are not saved. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So yeah, you know, I, when I was keeping the law, and most law keepers will attest that they are not doing it for salvation. Uh, if you ask the average law keeper, oh, well, what happens if you don't keep these laws? Well, they would point to the fact that Jesus said, right in Matthew chapter 15, that, you know, this is what will distinguish between the greatest and the least in heaven. Um, you know, so, yeah. but there are many law keepers who do think that, you know, if you eat pork and these things that you are going to hell. And I wasn't one of those, uh, law keepers, but you know, um, I do realize now though, in hindsight that it is theologically inconsistent though. So, yeah oh, what is sorry brother what is i just yeah i believe the whole the giving a pass on not keeping the mosaic law if you're a law keeper giving a pass to other christians who don't i realize now that it's just a means for uh trying to avoid the label of being a judaizer as well as you know a lot of these uh Torah based ministries want to be accepted by the greater Christian community. And that's going to be very difficult to do if you're going around telling people that you're going to hell for not keeping the Sabbath. Um, yeah. you know, so I do realize so, now, but I do believe it's, it's inconsistent because as a law keeper, you must keep Passover every year. Torah explicitly says that nobody who is uncircumcised in flesh can partake in, in Passover. And so you must, uh, you know, you must, you must be circumcised in order to do that. But many law keeping ministries will tell you, you don't need to get circumcised. Like they'll tell you you should, but you don't have to. Yeah, and that's just yeah, inconsistent I, with the Torah. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, hallelujah, brother. That, that's, that's awesome. Man.